Hi, my name is Matt and I'm an associate professor at Trinity. I'm also the course director for the MSc in Interactive Digital Media, which I'll be talking about today. IDM is a one-year full-time taught master's program which is run by the School of Computer Science and Statistics. IDM has existed since 1996. It was the first course of its type in Ireland and at that time it was known as the MSc in Multimedia Systems. IDM is intended for people who want to work in the digital space, either at the technology end or the design end or across the entire spectrum. It's for people who want to either work with an established company or organization or who want to start their own. One of our graduates has said, the IDM program gave me the flexibility and support to pursue my own path within the digital realm. I was able to refine my individual interests through the thesis component while also benefiting from a course suite of classes. IDM lets students build on knowledge gained at the undergraduate level to help them work and stay current in the digital media sector. Staying current is more important than ever because platforms for digital media applications are constantly evolving. A few years ago, these platforms were really only desktop computers and mobile devices, but they now also include virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality, and the Internet of Things. IDM stands on four pillars, theory, technology, design, and creativity. Everything we do in IDM rests on one or more of these, and everything we do is intended to help our students develop skills in one or more of these areas. The skill sets required to design and build digital media applications, as well as content, today have expanded and now include analytical, technical, and creative skills. While the course covers practical aspects of design and technology, it also includes a solid theoretical foundation for the topics we cover. While IDM isn't purely a theoretical course, we do care about theory because we find that having a good theoretical foundation helps the students develop a deeper understanding of the material and it also makes it easier for them to learn new material and techniques, for example a new programming language, later on. As you can probably guess from the four pillars, IDM is a highly multidisciplinary course. Teams that create digital media, content, as well as applications and platforms are practically always multidisciplinary, so this is really important. On IDM, we cover a carefully selected combination of topics from different disciplines, which I'll talk about shortly. Our students also come from many different backgrounds. Here are some examples of primary degrees of students who have come to study on IDM over the last couple of years. As you can see, we get a great mix of students from science and technology to the arts, humanities, over to the creative and design disciplines. Everybody brings something different to the course, and as a result, the students learn a lot from each other, not just from us. It also means our class discussions are really interesting because everybody brings a different perspective. On IDM, we have a relatively small class size, capped at 30 students per year. I've already talked about how professionally diverse our students are, but they're also culturally diverse. Here are some examples of countries that our students have come from for the last few years. In a typical year, we have about 10 different countries represented, and we also have a good gender balance. Like the professional diversity, the cultural diversity helps make our class discussions really interesting, because everybody brings a different perspective. All the teaching on IDM is structured into five core modules that run for three hours per week. Here is one of them, the Programming for Digital Media course. We don't assume that students can program when they begin the course, but everyone needs to learn it. In Programming for Digital Media, our students learn to tackle small-scale programming projects using JavaScript, which at the moment is the best suited language for building web applications. Because we start from the theoretical foundations of programming, such as control structures, object orientation, client-server communication, and so on, students will find it easy to pick up other programming languages later on, if they want to. We don't expect everyone who does IDM to become a programmer, although some do, but all our graduates know how to talk competently to programmers, because they have done programming themselves and are knowledgeable about exactly what it is programmers do. This is really helpful in a multidisciplinary team like those that are so common in the digital media space today. 
Authoring for digital media covers the design principles and technologies that you need to create digital media applications. This is our design course. We all know how important it is that an application is easy to use and navigate, so our students learn how to design and assess usability. It's also important that applications and content are accessible to people with disabilities, so we cover that also. The first semester focuses on web content and technologies, and the second semester on strategies for designing and implementing interactive applications for delivery on all digital platforms, including phones, tablets and desktops. Contextual media is our most theoretical course, but it still has many practical components. In game studies in the first semester, we learn to analyze games as texts in the same way that you would analyze a poem if you were studying literature or a film if you were doing film studies. On top of this theoretical understanding of games, we build practical game design skills. Our interactive narrative course follows a similar approach, practice on top of theory, and each student produces a small interactive story as part of this coursework. In the spring semester, we cover critical thinking around digital media. We deal with the historical, cultural and sociological context for digital media works and technologies. The intention is to help our students get a deeper understanding of what they see around them and what they do themselves in relation to digital media. We teach them how to reflect upon and situate digital media works and technologies in relevant cultural contexts and to anchor their own original ideas in a deeper thinking than is often possible in today's fast-moving world. Audio, video and sensor technologies is a course that does exactly what its name indicates. This course makes heavily use of our audiovisual equipment pool. We have a collection of cameras, microphones, recording equipment, as well as sensor computing kit dedicated to this course. In audio technologies, we start with the nature of sound and how human hearing works, which is surprisingly complex and very interesting. And on top of that, we build practical recording and production skills for studio recording as well as recordings made in the field. In video technologies, we start with the theoretical topics relating to the movie image, such as mise-en-scene and composition, and then we build practical shooting, lighting and editing skills on top of that. At the end of the course, students can produce professional quality video and sound for their own digital media projects. In sensor technologies, students use small sensor-enabled computers to build physical computing devices similar to those used in the Internet of Things. The students frequently choose to use sensors for their final projects, for example to build custom game controllers or physical user interfaces or other innovative ways that people can interact with the projects. Visual computing and design consists of two streams. In the first semester we focus on graphic design, where we cover information design, typography, text image interaction and some of the other topics you see on the slide. The focus is on fundamental principles of graphic design and design thinking that can be applied in multiple contexts. For the practical assignments, we use Adobe Creative Cloud, which is made available to all our students. In the second stream, image processing and 3D modeling, we focus on the theory and practice of the production of digital images, animations, and interactive graphical experiences such as games, virtual reality, and augmented reality. To train their practical skills, our students develop a 30-second 3D animation as part of this coursework. So what skills will you have after IDM? Well, I hope the details are getting clear already, but let's zoom out just a little bit. First, you will know how to create and produce content across a range of modalities, including video, audio, code, such as apps or dynamic web applications, as well as 2D and 3D digital content. Second, you'll have a thorough understanding of the different types of digital media content, the platforms and technologies that underlie them, and you also have the ability to think deeply about the work and technologies that you see around you and that you create yourself. Finally, you'll have the ability to work in a multidisciplinary team with people from many different backgrounds. Such teams are more important than ever, and this is a crucial skill today. I would like to highlight two of our teaching philosophies. First, the combination of practice and theory is one that we care a lot about and which I mentioned a couple of times already. 
we always try to build our students' practical skills on top of our theoretical foundation. Second, we use a combination of research-led teaching and practice-led teaching. Trinity is a strong research university, and some of our professors are top researchers in their respective fields. This means that they can include some of their own research into their teaching and supervision on the IDM course, which gives our teaching a cutting edge. Other of our professors are practitioners from the digital media industry who have years of experience and often run their own companies in the digital media space. This helps make sure our teaching reflects the best professional practices from the industry today. This balance between research-led and practice-led teaching is one of the things that makes IDM unique. I'd like to show you the structure of the course. Our year is divided into three semesters and the topics are covered as you see on the slide. Throughout the year, we arrange invited talks by people from industry, which gives the students a chance to learn about what's happening in the industry right now and also to build connections and networks. We have timetable classes every weekday and there's time allocated for coursework in the afternoons. The workload on IDM is high and you should expect to spend a lot of time on projects and coursework. All assessment is done by projects, individual and in teams. There are no written exams on the course. As you may have noticed from the previous slide, we have something called the research paper. This is an individual project, a mini dissertation, in which each student writes a 12,000 word essay on a topic of their choice. Here are some different examples of titles of recent research papers written by IDM students. Regardless of your topic, the idea of a research paper is to construct an academic argument to explore a particular research question. It's your chance to dive into an area that is of particular interest to you. Our school is quite large, so we have a wide range of supervisors available who are able to supervise on many different topics. We also work with professors from other schools. In our third semester, we have but what many of our students consider the best part of the course, which is our summer research project. For this project, we team up the students in groups of three to five students per team, and it is then up to each team to develop an idea for something they want to design and build, and then to design and build it. The summer research project is the student's chance to show off all the skills they've acquired during the first two semesters and to develop a really strong portfolio piece that they can show to prospective employers or maybe use to start their own company if that's what they want to do. The projects are driven by students' creative visions. We deliberately don't use an internship structure with clients from industry because we want to see how creative the students can be. We want them to work on their ideas, not someone else's. The final projects are exhibited to the public in our annual IDM showcase, a big festive end to the course, which is typically held in Trinity Science Gallery. I'm going to show you some photos from our past showcases. Here is the entrance to the exhibition one year, photographed by one of our graduates. Here is someone experiencing one of the projects, which was a virtual reality project. This project was a multi-screen interactive installation of stories inspired by James Joyce's book, Dubliners. It combined words and multi-perspective video, and the main interaction from the audience was through the touchscreen that you see in the foreground. Every year we have a budget for the student projects, and we use that to buy special equipment that the students need to realize their ideas. This project was a cooperative virtual reality game for two players, where one player was inside virtual reality and the other player was outside. The two players had to communicate in order to complete the game. I should mention we also have a game lab with state-of-the-art game consoles and a good collection of games, and we also have a sm small virtual reality lab. These labs are in the top two floors of a building uh, that we have just off the Trinity uh, campus. These two floors are dedicated to IDM and nobody else than us uses them. This project took its starting point in research from the 1970s to develop a new way of visualizing demographic data about health levels, employment levels, and poverty levels on top of a map. The students used a demographic data set from Ireland's Central Statistics Office and also produced videos with interviews with some of the people living in the most interesting areas that they discovered. This was an interactive art installation that the audience interacted with through body movement. 
The installation would react to the audience with dynamic sounds and images. This project was a very sensual, aesthetic experience, and it was the type of installation you might come across in an art gallery. This project used sensor technologies and projection to create an evocative sense of the five Chinese elements and the cycle of life as known from Chinese culture. This project was a digital platform for social activism designed specifically for children. It included physical as well as digital components. Other projects that I haven't shown include games to help children learn programming or learn about recycling and interactive installations to help people learn about privacy. I hope it's clear how different the projects are. We encourage the student to be as creative as they possibly can and as long as their project ideas have to do with interactive digital media, almost any project is possible. Our graduates work in the digital media and related sectors, both nationally and internationally. Here are some of the job titles that our graduate, graduates currently hold. You can see there's a, a, a section of jobs from across from the analytical end to the technical end to design jobs. Our graduates are employed by many different companies and organizations. Here are some of the companies that our graduates are currently working for. As I mentioned, some graduates also start their own companies. I'd like to wrap up this presentation with one additional quote from one of our graduates. The course taught me to think outside of the box when it comes to computer science, and it made me confident to use my knowledge about technology to recreate it and reshape it in new ways. So if you're interested in theory, technology, design, and creativity, if you like creating things, building things, and learning things, if you want to work with digital media and associated technologies, then this may be the course for you. So thank you for listening. Here are our contact details in case you have questions. We look forward to hearing from you.